welcome to Silverstone for the opening round of the 2016 European Le Mans series. Now we've got lots of new teams, cars and drivers joining the grid this season. So we're set for another exciting year of racing ahead. But before then, let's take a look back at the highlights from the pre-season test at Le Castellet. Paul Ricard test not only gave the teams a chance to shake down their new machinery for the season, but also an indication of who might be competitive. Fastest of all the lime green crone racing, Ligier Nissan, courtesy of Frenchman Olivier Pla. Tourier also showed strongly with their Orica. Third fastest, Greaves Motorsports with their number 41 machine. The class looks set for an intense battle with five different marks competing. In LNP3, lots of new teams and drivers in the growing category. The fastest Ligier JSP3 was United Autosport, a brand new entry driven by Alex Brundle. Panis Bartes, another new team, went second fastest. Among the GTE cars, Ferrari 458 Italias from AF Corsa topped the timesheets, followed by Proton's Porsche 911, though Aston Martin didn't attend the session. With 44 cars expected on the grid at Silverstone, the 2016 season is primed to be a classic. European Le Mans series acts as a training ground for teams and drivers in sports car racing with three competitive classes, GT, LMP2 and LMP3. It's a big success and it continues to grow in 2016. One more meeting for the season because we grew up the, the series and it makes sense when you are going in Europe to try to visit the best place all around Europe. So we have, uh, we have had a um, spa. Uh, by the end of September. But uh, the, the most important thing this year is, is the quality of the grid. If you see the lineup of the drivers, if you see the quality of the cars, 44 cars, it's very impressive. Just to imagine the start of the race in Silverstone with, uh, if I'm well, more or less 30 prototype, a little bit more, will be something very impressive for sure. For the LMP2 especially, the performance are very close. For LMP3, probably the driver's attitude will be more important on the result than the pure performance of the car. And in GT, this is very open uh, between the different brands on the grid. If you like the motorsport, please rejoin the LMS because you will be very exciting and you will really enjoy. Thank you. The GTE category pitches some of the world's greatest sports car manufacturers against each other. Ferraris came out on top last year, but the teams running the Italian machinery know that not only are they the benchmark, they're also the targets. Ferrari is a fantastic car. It has proved uh, over the last few years that it is uh, really, really consistent on every different track that we go to. Um, in saying that, the opposition is very strong with Aston Martin and Porsche. Uh, are, are super super strong and plus there is a lot of Ferraris so uh, for sure it's a good car but uh, the competition is very very high. With the calendar we have there every track has a strength and weakness for some cars so I think here fingers crossed I think the Ferrari can be strong. And what I've seen so far and at the test in Porica it's quite a strong lineup and um, to be honest I do not really know where we will be yet so for me it's a, it's a big challenge and quite interesting that weekend where we're gonna end up I think it's due to many of the amateurs how quick they get adapted the competition is on we start the season and um, everybody would like to be in front of the other one we are in Silverstone we have some rain I think it's possible to beat the Ferrari in the rain so actually that's good condition here for the Porsche. Uh, this year for the LMS, my expectations I think have to be set on trying to win the championship. Um, this will be my third year in sports car racing. 
uh, Fergio of Aston Martin Racing and um, a great driver lineup. So I think we really have to um, to deliver what what the fans expect, and I think we we obviously expect to win. So it's it's really a championship we're going in to try and win. Last year, LMP3 made its debut, and the category has proved a runaway success with 19 cars entered for Silverstone. And make no mistake, these are real prototype racers, hard to handle. Firstly, the car's pretty stiff um, at low speed, so you have to be very much on top of the car as it feels a little bit edgy. Uh, and then secondly, at very, very high speed, the, the car, you really have to you know, pick it up by the scruff of the neck when you have got the downforce uh, and carry it. Um, so those two, it's almost like a dichotomy in some way of, of performance uh, between the low and the high speed. You have to get your head around that pretty quickly. In a field of Ligier's, Murphy's prototypes dare to be different, running a Ginetta as they wait for their own tailor-made chassis. For sure, you can tell how good of a job Ligier's done with their cars. And uh, I, I think, you know, the class really, how popular it is, shows this is what people want. And this is the kind of racing they want to do. And I think it's we've picked the right time to be involved in it. We probably are going to start a little bit conservative, but I think by the end of the year, we it's our job to make sure our car runs up front and uh, we sell some cars. The championship looks to be wide open with no clear favourite, and that's good news for all the drivers. This is the first time we're all together, um, so we haven't really, you know, um, been around and check everyone, but uh, there are a few really, really fast teams, and, you know, at this point of the competition, I'm, I'm, they're all fast. We're expecting some good races, uh, a big challenge, so uh, it should be interesting. The LMP2 category also looks wide open. New teams, new chassis, new challenges. And facing them all, last year's champions are back. Now, last season was a great year for us winning the championship. Uh, coming here, obviously, I suppose people have got a target on us as uh, a good contender for the championship again. We've got all new car with the Ligier JSP2, but similar engine package, but yeah, new drivers. So we have a uh, Memo Rojas uh, coming over from America. Uh, Julian Canal, who brings a lot of ex experience with him. Kuba Gamaziak, who's uh, new to sports car racing in prototypes and shown good speed through the testing we've done. So I feel the driver lineup is going to be very strong for the year and uh, the car's good, the drivers are good. The team is well proven, so I think we have a good chance again for the championship. British rivals Jota return with a new name, G Drive, and a revised lineup in the cockpit. They are tilting for the title. So last year we were the best team, but we didn't win the championship, and that's obviously painful. But we've, I think, we've used that that pain and anger over the winter and turned it into motivation to come back in 2016. You know, we've we've been keeping our heads down. We've been doing um, a lot of testing away from everyone else and I think uh, I think we're in good shape. Um, new teammate this year in Guido van der Gaard. and I think um, we've got a strong team and uh, we've got all the uh, ingredients to get it done. Thierry by TDS were one of last year's front runners with their Orica Nissan. Pierre Thierry says last year we only lost out by two points so our objective is clear. We want to take the title back. We won it in 2012 and now we want the number one plate back. We are going to win as many races as we can. So Chris Hoy is a two-wheeled Olympic superstar with six gold medals to his name and 11 world championship titles. Last year he claimed victory in the LMP3 category and now he steps up to LMP2 on his road to Le Mans. I've always been a fan of motorsport but I really became a big fan watching Colin McRae in the mid-90s when he was world rally champion. He was Scottish, I'm Scottish. And, and the connection was that was there. Um, he was a hero of mine. And that was the big spark when I watched Colin racing. But it wasn't just rallying, it was Formula One, it was Le Mans, it was endurance racing, all, type, all types of motorsport. The similarities between cycling and driving, um, the biggest thing I suppose is just the sensation of speed. It's the enjoyment, the thrill, the, the adrenaline that you get from racing. In terms of the competition itself, 
you can you can try to predict what's going to happen by looking ahead, by by watching your opponents and, and trying to, to to read their minds in terms of how to get past and how to pass them and how to defend from them from behind. So uh, focusing as well, being able to focus on what you need to do and not worry about other things around you, that, that was important in cycling and important on the in the car as well. It's very easy to be to be passionate about motorsport. It started out as a hobby, but because of my personality, because I'm a competitive person and I, I, I want to do the best that I can, um, it just grows and grows. And now, you know, I get just the same feeling on the start line in the car as I did in, on my bike. It's the same focus, the same excitement, the same nerves. Uh, and it's, it's just great to be back in a, a team environment again, to be working with a team for a common goal uh, which I thought that part of my life was over, and now it's 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 a whole new, a whole new life started, a whole new career. I love the prototypes. I think that they're, it's a, a more pure driving feel. You, you you get more information through the from, the from the road, from the track, into your backside and into the, the steering wheel. For me, it's a more intuitive way of driving. Um, I, I love the GT cars too, but I feel I feel more confident in the a prototype. And if you believe in in the grip and the air the aerodynamics, and you you put confidence into it, it will reward you, and you'll you'll go faster. And once you break through that that mental challenge of trusting the car, it's amazing. I mean, it's it's the best car I've driven so far, and, and yeah, I love it. It's great. It's going to be a massive challenge this year, but the, the main focus is Le Mans and trying to learn before Le Mans, get as much experience and be as well prepared as possible for Le Mans. Um, I first became aware of Le Mans in uh, playing with my Skeletrix cars, my toy cars, because they had uh, headlights on one of the cars. And I asked my dad, why does this car have lights and the rest don't? And he said, because it's an endurance car, it races at Le Mans through the night. So Le Mans is the the reason why I've, I've been doing all of this um, building towards Le Mans and that, that has been the end goal, the, the main focus. So I, I think it's it's just amazing that you, as an amateur, you can compete at the same time um, on the same track against the very best drivers in the world in an iconic event that everybody around the world recognizes. It's not just for motorsport fans, it's everybody knows about the Le Mans 24 hour race. Um, and it, it, it's almost unthinkable that I, you know, I'm gonna be racing there Freshman Nico Lapierre is one of few drivers who'll compete in both the ELMS and the World Endurance Championship at Silverstone, and in both cases he'll be driving an Orica Nissan. That'll be run by Dragon Speed in ELMS and Alpine in the WEC. It could be a tough weekend. Someone's going to be a very busy boy. Busy. It's really busy. I mean, I have to jump from one car to the other to adapt a bit to the team. This is a French team, the other team is American, so I have to change the language as well. And uh, I have to travel in between the two paddocks, so it's a yeah, very schizophrenic weekend, yeah. I'm lucky that it's the same base, but in the end, uh, the both team have a different setup. I have different teammates as well, so I need to adapt to my teammate. And also the, the, the dashboard or the steering wheel button are a bit different, you know, every team has its specificity, so I need to make sure I, I drive the good car and also don't misunderstand the box, you know, because I stop on this box for the WEC and the other one for the, for the ELMS, so I have to be careful. I just try to focus on, on the driving, on the briefing, debrief, not miss any, any meeting because I have meeting here and meeting there, so I just try to be on time and do the best as possible, but uh, it's, it for sure it's the most difficult weekend of the year for me. I have more drive time, so it's good driving in two championships as well, and both championships are really tight this year. I mean, here in WEC, you know, it's a very high level, and in ELMS also, it stepped up a lot this year, and there are many, many cars, so it's really enjoyable. You know, I really like it. So.
Saturday morning at Silverstone, a wet track, but time for qualifying nevertheless. Conditions have been vile since first free practice as the cars head out on track into a new format, 10 minutes of track time dedicated to each class. Richie Stanaway set the pace in the Aston Martin, a second clear of Richard Leitz in the Porsche, who jumped Andrea Bertolini's Ferrari in the dying seconds. The conditions, though, were anything but ideal. A number of the LMP3 drivers struggled with traction. This is Pierre Nicolet beaching the Oak number 24. He was undamaged. Number 19, Dino Lunardi in the Duquen machine, seemed to be comfortably out front. Ross Kaiser in the 360 Racing Leger grab pole in the very last moments as Alex Brundle put debutantes United Motorsports third on the grid. In LMP2, pole was set by Swiss driver Matthias Besch in the number 46 Tyrie by TDS machine. There was red flags because the number 48 Murphy's prototype ended up in the gravel. Stefano Coletti from Monaco went second fastest in SMP's 32 machine. Nico Lapierre gambled on a late run, but yellow flags stopped him taking pole. And that left Matthias Besch on top of the pile as everybody else struggled for grip. Four different chassis filled the top four places on the LMP2 grid, Tyrier leading the way. Fantastic that uh, everyone's come out in this dreadful weather here. So I'm an Ashton Martin fan. It, it's fantastic. It's uh, typical Silverstone weather, but it's good. We're having fun. As race time approaches, the tension on the grid is palpable. 44 cars, Arctic conditions near freezing temperatures, and for the moment a cold and fairly green track, but there's no guarantee that the bad weather won't return. Well, we're down here on the grid, ready to get started with this race, the four hour of Silverstone. I'm here with a GTE pole car, Stuart Hall. It's a great position for you guys to be starting. Of course, it is the home race for Aston Martin Racing, isn't it? Yeah, no, you couldn't ask for that. Anything more, really, to start the weekend. Uh, lots of work to do, though. We've got a four hour race ahead of us. Many, many cars, LMP2, LMP3 and us. So it's going to be a busy one, but hopefully it should be a great entertaining race for everyone and you never know, we might grab a result out of it. Well Simon, here we are again, the start of another new season. What are the hopes? Well, we got you know we come so close in the last two seasons that we got to win, you know, and uh, and Le Mans as well, you know, we hope to hope to win there as well. So that's uh, that's the start of the season, like everybody else, you know, the aim is to win. But it's a really high quality field again this year. Um, maybe I think it's the best field that there's ever been in this. So uh, it's certainly not going to be easy. There's going to be a lot of competition. But looking forward to it. Absolutely, and a slightly different driver lineup for you guys this year. Yeah, yeah. So me and me and Harry, and then uh, and now joined by uh, Guido, who's uh, you know a great guy, very quick, um, and uh, looking forward to getting out. Well, I hope that you have a really good result here at Silverstone. It'll be good to see. Thank you very much indeed. See Thank you, you, Simon. Well, Dino, qualifying.
qualifying was eventful. It looked like you'd got pole position right until the very last minute. Yeah, that, that's racing. Uh, you know, uh, during all the, the, the qualifying, uh, I was in pole position and uh, on the last moment, uh, uh, on the last uh, cross, uh, when the, the Kaiser uh, crossed the finish line, he, he took me the pole position, so yes, <laughs> it's good for him. Less, a little bit less uh, for us because uh, we um, we lose uh, we lost uh, one point for the championship, and every point of uh, this kind of championship uh, is uh, important. So the most important, the balance of the car is very very well. Uh, I think the start of the race will be very very tricky. So we don't know uh, exactly what happened uh, on the first corner. Uh, we have still four hours to to race. So. Cross the finger and uh, keep fighting. And how have you found the change from the GT car into the LMP3? Uh, it's completely different. Uh, it's two different cars, two uh, different uh, driving styles, and you have you have to, to adapt yourself uh, uh, about the car. Uh, but uh, drive a prototype here in Silverstone is just amazing. It's magic. Uh, it's incredible to, to drive uh, this kind of car. Have a good race. Thank you. Heading to the rolling start, we are about to get underway for the 2016 European Le Mans Series. Pierre Thierrier pacing the field furthest from the camera. Alongside him is Andreas Wirt. It's cold, it's just about dry, very slippery offline and Spinner in the background. Already, oh, and that's Leo Roussel heavily into the wall in Pegasus's LMP2. More Spinners behind. Lockups into the first turn and cars off already. And that is the pole sitter taking to the runoff area. More spinners in turn one. Cars going off left, right and centre. Very tricky indeed to keep temperature in the tyres without weaving heavily and braking heavily on the formation lap. With this massive field, it's real trouble. And there's a challenge for the lead. That's Harry Ticknell in the open G-Drive Nissan. That's the Gibson chassis. The Joseph Sport team. And up into third place, the yellow and red car. That's Sean Galeal, the Formula 3 refugee from Jagonia. I am. He races for SMP. The Panis Bartes car in fourth position. Where's that come from? Eighth on the grid. Tristan Gomedy is up there as well. And Gomedy has come from 12th position. Alex Brundle going strong in the LMP3 category. And those cars, the front runners there, have made their way up the order fast as well. A lot of their LMP2 rivals went off left, right and centre. It's the wise heads that have survived the opening few corners. What an astonishing start here at Silverstone. If this is the way the season is going to continue, then we are going to have a real humdinger. Eurasia, Thierrier, Panis Bartes, SMP flying up the order. And right in the middle of the shot, just going to the right there, that's the LMP3 leader, Alex Brundle for United. Also, sports teammate Matt Bell almost run off the road on the outside of the circuit. There goes the number three car, Matt Bell. He's second in LMP3 for the rookie team in their first race. The leader coming towards us as pulling a gap over Andreas Wirt, Harry Tignall, Sean Galeel in third place, under pressure from Paul-Luc Chatin. Chatin in the Panis Bartes competition machine. We know Chatin is a quick driver. Right behind him, Tristan Gomedy, the 33 car, red and white machine, has flown up the order. Crone Racing car Bjorn Wertheim just outside the top half dozen trying to catch this group. And here comes the challenge. Galel on the inside line. And around the outside, lots of pressure. Runs out wide, comes back on, down the inside in the veil, takes third place, but surely he shouldn't keep that. He only got the advantage by running off the circuit on the exit of Stowe. 
Well, nevertheless, he has split the SMP cars, and as Harry Tintle comes towards us, he's now trying to find a way past the second place machine. Andreas Wirt and Sean Galel under pressure now from the very much more experienced sports car racer Tristan Gobbity, who throws it to the inside. And Galeel offline, losing grip through goes Pierre Thirier up to fifth position. Sean Galeel down to sixth spot. In the background is the Aston Martin of GTE leader Stuart Hall. The 66 JMW Motorsport Ferrari in a strong second place. There's recovering Murphy's prototypes machine. Lots of recovery going on. The Proton Porsche feeling the pressure now from behind. And behind them, the recovering Dragon Speed number 21 entry. Henrik Hedman in that prototype, one of a number to lose control and lose speed at the start. It all started with number 19, looping around David Alliday. And then look at that, Leo Roussel. Looks like he checked up to avoid the pole sitter and then just dived into the wall. Well, from behind, we see the Duquesne entry spin first and then, oh yes, look, puff of smoke, lock up from Roussel. Looks like the front row men backed off a little unexpectedly. Harry Tingle in traffic, leaders following him through. There's Vert. oh, and a wobble behind the Porsche and off, a long way off has gone Pierre Thirier. He's dropped down and right at the back of the field, he rejoins with no damage, but look at the lime green car. That's Bjorn Wertheim. He's in the Crone Racing car, looking for fifth position, trying to go down the inside of Sean Galeel as they mingle with GTE cars and LMP3 runners. Does he get through? No, trying to go a long way around the outside. Look at the lime green car. Galeel defends on the inside. Bjorn Wertheim, the reigning LMP2 champion, of course, that's the RLR Motorsport LMP3 car in the middle. They go either side of him. He had an LMP2 car in each door mirror. Fantastic. Replay here, David Alliday on the inside, loses control of the LMP3 car, clatters into the air, of course, a Ferrari and earns a drive through. Battle for second place, Andreas Wert, the red, white and blue car under pressure, has to change his line. Fantastic launch from Paul-Luc Chatin into the Beckett's S's. Wow. That Panis Bartes car is absolutely flying up to second place and pulling away already. And the SMP car under pressure from its teammate. Down the inside goes Sean Galeel straight through for third. Bjorn Wertheim back behind Galeel. The lime green crone racing machine on the inside. He too goes by Andreas Wert. That's a change for fourth place. Wert came onto the hangar straight in second. He's now down to fifth. And Galeel once more under pressure from Wertheim. Which way is he going to go around the Proton Porsche? Galeel goes the outside. That becomes the inside. Honours even. And Wertheim can't get in front. Galeel once more has the corner in his favour. He hangs on to third. But Paul-Luc Chatin is long gone ahead of them in second place. Battle for second in LMP2, Matt Bell hounding Thomas Laurent. The M Racing YMR car with the yellow highlights, they're just going by the Ginetta Nissan. That is the only Ginetta in the field in LMP3. That's the Murphy's Prototypes team, but Matt Bell looked great run out of the Beckett SS's slipstreams down the hangar straight, up the inside and into second place. United Autosports back to 1-2 in the category. Alex Brundle leading. Pierre Thirier looking for fifth place behind the red, white and blue, number 32 of Andreas Wirt, the pole man of course, in the Thirier by TDS number 46 car, had a really poor getaway. Now looking aggressive, he went off in traffic earlier on, trying to recover that lost ground, can't do it down, into Cops corner, out wide runs. The second of the SMP cars, you just saw Sean Galeel, the yellow and red SMP Gigonia IAM car. Oh, and Thierry did get through. Well, Matthias Besch's pole position was a little bit squandered early on. But Pierre Thierry has got through and he's got off again and heavily into the barriers this time. Pierre Thierry has done a proper job, went off at Cops, got away with it. I'm not sure he's going to get away with that. There's debris in the gravel trap that looked like a substantial impact. These cars are built tough though. Let's take a look. Just runs out wide in Luffield. And that's all it took to put him into the barriers. The 
team's faces tell the story. Thierry by TDS out of the race. Pole position man in sixth place. And then in the barriers, Pierre Thierry. And that is the car that was in second place. Tristan Gobbini for Eurasia Motorsport. Full course yellow is out. And the race leader slows dramatically. Two, one, green. We're back to green. We're back to green. Picking up the speed once more, Harry Tinknell. The G-Drive Gibson. And the first of the front runners to stop. This is the second place, number three, Panis Bartes car. Paul Luc Chateau, what a start he made. Raced last year with Alpine, of course. Mimo Rojas brings the 41 Greaves car in. The Mexican driver new to LMP2, but he's got experienced teammates in Julian Canal. Not so much in Kubica Masiak. And in is the race leader. So Harry Tinknell stays in the G-Drive Gibson Nissan. And Jota Sport team running this car. And that is trouble for our LMP3 front running M Racing YMR car. Saw them battling for second place. Lots of smoke from the back end of the car. Well, and the fire extinguisher has gone off. And that may not rejoin the race. I think it is covered in extinguishing. And if that gets into the engine, there's real trouble. Here's our LMP3 leader, Alex Brundle at United Autosports. Another British GT team leading in the GTE class. This is the Beach Dean Aston Martin 99. Alex McDowell on board. They have the lead of GTE at the moment. Battling with the 66 Ferrari from another British outfit, JMW Motorsport. Rory Butcher third in that 66 car after their pit stop. There's Alexander Talkinitsa back for another season in the ELMS with the AT Racing Ferrari, the black car there. Well in contention ahead of the Proton Porsche. Driver change at G-Drive. Simon Dolan drops into the car and Charlie George is in the garage with his teammate, Harry Tinknell. Harry, that was a stunning opening stint from you. Yeah, it was, I mean, a good first lap for sure. I was a little bit disappointed with fourth, obviously, you know, with Jota, we, we expect pole and it didn't quite happen this morning, but uh, I was very glad to uh, have the clear track after three or four corners and just get my head down and uh, and get away but uh, you know the main thing is we've got to leave for Simon now uh, struggled a little bit on the second stint with the tyres but um, you know overall very solid uh, first stint and looks like some of our main rivals cracked around us so we just got to keep our heads down no mistakes and see what happens at the end and of course it's double duty for you this weekend driving in the WEC as well yeah absolutely it's really really busy I'm you know I'm just as quick on the on the, on in the golf buggy you know from the EMS paddock down to the wet paddock as I am out on the track but um, yeah very busy and obviously you know driving two different cars in two different classes isn't easy but um, I know this car well and the main thing is I know the track well as well so it's quite easy to adapt and um, yeah that's me done for the EMS now so fingers crossed we can win that and then uh, yeah we'll see what we can do tomorrow forward. Go and have a rest. As Harry mentioned, he is one of Ford's factory drivers in the World Endurance Championship. Meanwhile, talking about Tim Tops, this is an Aston Martin 1-2. The 99 Beechdean car leading the 96 Golf Collection car. Stuart Hall, former world champion, back in the 96 car. 66 JMW Ferrari, certainly not out of the equation. But at the moment, McDowell versus Hall, that is your lead battle. Bit of sunshine coming out as well. Temperature still not much above freezing though. It looks good, but it feels pretty cold. A great chance though for Aston Martin to shine at home about a half an hour drive from their base at Gaydon. Trouble for the Algarve Pro Racing number 25 car. That's the LMP2 entry with Sir Chris Hoy at the wheel. They had a troubled start, lost a lot of ground, back up to 10th. Oh, and he comes backwards out of the Beckett's S's where Simon Dolan had a big shunt a couple of years ago. Looks like Sir Chris has gone quite a long way off. Real shame for them. Full course yellow, and that means pit stops. Paul Luc Chatin is out, and in gets 98 World Cup winning French goalkeeper Fabian Barthez. Set up this team with Olivier Panis with some help from Fortec Motorsport. Barthez turned to motor racing some while ago after retiring from football, and it's trouble times for Sir Chris Hoy. Charlie's with him. Chris. This is your first weekend stepping up to the LMP2. Yeah. So far, it has been a bit of a learning curve, hasn't it? 
It has, but um, loads of really positive things from it. You know, we, we started the race in 25th or 26th place, um, and we're up to P10 now. You know, I had loads of really good things to take from my stint in, her, in, in particular, but um, I made a mistake and just, I went offline, touched a bit of dirt that had been dragged on the track, and I spun the car. So we lost about a minute, minute and a half um, getting out the gravel there. But when I was, you know, when I was getting going, I was doing 153s, 154s, which wasn't far off the, the pace of some of the, the pro drivers, so really pleased with that. But it's just managing traffic. That's the biggest thing I learned today about, you know, making sure you're decisive, making sure you don't, you don't go half up, you know, 50-50, making, making sure if you're going to go for it, you commit 100%. Absolutely, and of course this year is a very exciting year because you're going to be doing Le Mans 24 hour. Yeah, that's, that's been the, the aim and the goal for the last three or four years, really. Ever since I started racing uh, in cars, I, I, that was the dream. Um, and to, to be, you know, still, we're not there yet, but the, it's all it's all lined up, ready to go. And we've got a couple of races to go, or two, one race to go, and a couple of tests to go, and then, then we're going to be out at Le Mans. And I go out and do the, the simulator test next week, which will be fun as well. Um, but yeah, I can't wait. Fantastic. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Cheers. Well, everybody knows Chris's background, his history and his heading to Le Mans and this man is hoping to do so as well. This is the SRT 41 by Oak Racing entry, car number 84. It's what the ACO have called an innovative car. Frederick Sose, a French entrepreneur, was hit by disability in 2012 and dreams of going to Le Mans just like Sir Chris Hoy. Halfway through the four hours of Silverstone, a remarkable leaderboard. New boys Panis Bartes ahead of G Drive and Greaves with Crone, a very strong fourth. The LMP3 category, New Boys Graf and United Autosports are splitting the top four places between them. First and third, second and fourth. But there might be some home success in the GTE class as well. 99 and 96, the Astons are first and second. Ahead of 66, the British entered JMW Motorsport Ferrari, lying in third. His 20-second lead is down to nearly nothing. Fabian Bartes with Simon Dolan coming down the inside into Stowe to take the lead away. G-Drive Racing in front. And Panis Bartes now in second place. Great stint from Simon Dolan to undo that 20 second deficit and take the lead away from the Frenchman. There's our LMP3 leader. Number two machine, United Autosports, Christian England, fighting back after the pit stops, retakes the lead in the category. The Graf Nissan's in second and third place. Everybody running that Ligier chassis with the exception of Murphy's. They're running an older Ginetta. Over the brow, through Maggots and into the Beckett's S's goes the LMP3 leader. This category so super successful this season. And there's Simon Dolan taking the inside line, passing another slower car. Such an important part of the job for the LMP2 drivers. There's always traffic to try and get by. And of course, in a four-hour race, handling the pit stops is vital as well. And that's gone very well for JMW Motorsport. Their Ferrari currently leading the GTE class ahead of the Aston Martins. Drivers nowadays in endurance racing are rated by the governing body. Bronze, silver, gold or platinum for superstars like Andrea Bertolini here. And in this GT category, you must have at least one bronze driver and no more than one gold or platinum. JMW's Robert Smith is their bronze driver and after Andrea, it'll be the turn of silver-rated Rory Butcher. Rory, you guys are currently leading the GTE class. It's going pretty well. It is going well. Um, we've currently, but we are having some issues with uh, the set of tyres that Andrea uh, is using at the moment. And he, he's losing a lot of time. He, he's complaining of the car maybe dropping out the window of the tyre pressures. I think it's because it got cooler. So we're losing a little bit of time to Darren Turner and, and the Aston. But um, the Aston still have their bronze drivers to run, and I've got a stint to go at the end. So I'm hoping we're going to be OK. Trouble for Panis Bartes, the number 23 car going very slowly. Timothy Bure is in the pit lane. That white line was the pit speed limiter line, but it looks like he's got no engine. He's just had to pull over. Oh, that is really cruel. He's actually in the pit lane. He's just not near the team. 
Now, can they go and rescue him? And that means that Stefano Coletti is now up to second place for SMP Racing. Coletti, the Monegas driver, rated as a gold driver. Next single seater race. And it sounds like it's all over. Fabian Bartes there in the beanie. Great helicopter shot of classic prototype racing down the hangar straight at Silverstone. And there is your LMP3 leader, the number two car for United Autosports. Graf Racing's number nine in second. United Autosports closing in on them in third place. And it is starting to rain now. Well, a rainstorm could be a real disaster for everybody. They're all out there on slicks on a very cold track. It doesn't need water sprinkling on it as well. Going to have to be very cautious. Here's the Pegasus car. Oh, he's been off. Look, he's collected a corner marker. Smoking heavily at the back. Is that a puncture? No, it shed a wheel. Well, it might not have had much air in it. Or is that just the tyre? Is the rim on the car? No, it's the entire thing, but it has been rubbing on the bodywork. Looks like maybe a rear suspension failure. Full course yellow. And the Pegasus car is out with only 21 minutes of the race remaining. What tough luck. Closing stages for Gerda van der Gaard. G-Drive Racing's new boy has the honor of taking the car to the flag and it looks as though that will be in first place. There's Simon Dolan stocking up on energy after his stint. Alex Brundle on the left there with the United Autosports team can hardly bear watch. They are leading in the LMP3 category. Mike Guash driving their car. LMP2, a British leader. LMP3, a British leader. And in the GTE class, there is a British team leading as well. JMW Motorsports 66 car leading with Rory Butcher. 99 Aston Martin in second place. And the JMW Motorsport car out front in the GT class. The only GT class now. Here is the 99 car. Second spot for them. The Beach Dean Aston giving chase to the number three United Autosports Ligier Nissan LMP3 car. Oh, trouble. This is the IDEX Sport Ligier, the number 28 car. And that is Paul Lafargue. And it's the exit of the Beckett's S's. Oh, oh my goodness me, that was very close. Well, that's not a place to spin out. And that's not a way to rejoin. He nearly wrecked his and two other cars in the dying moments of the race. Look how close that was. They would have had no chance of avoiding him if he pulled on another meter or two. There is Alan McNish. Mentors Harry Tinknell having a chat there with Tinknell's teammate Simon Dolan as the chequered flag gets ever nearer. The 38 Jota team with their G-Drive racing Gibson Nissan closer and closer to the chequered flag. Gato van der Garde, the Dutchman pushing hard through traffic. There's only one way to drive these cars and that's at speed to use all the grip and downforce that they're designed to produce. Well, as the weight comes out of the fuel tank in the closing stages, producing quicker and quicker laps now, but he has to be careful in traffic. There's Tinknell and Dolan. What's he doing? Well, let's hope he knows what he's doing. Flashing his headlights. Vandegaard after a season out of the cockpit. Trying to use all his speed. Doesn't have as much sports car racing experience. They do look worried, don't they? I'm sure Van de Garde feels very comfortable with what he's doing, but his teammates are not quite so convinced as he tries to put his car inside and outside of this multi-car battle. Trying to get by the delayed Panis Bartes, Ligier in front, and that's the race performance Orica in front of him, the open car. Okay, Van de Garde is producing scintillating lap speed here. And if he can hold it all together and not clatter into anything, he could be a massive advantage for G-Jive Racing this season with Harry Tinknell and Gerda van de Garde 
It looks like Simon Dolan has got two very quick teammates. Van der Gaard down the inside into Stowe. Goes by the race performance car. Goodness me, it is a little heart in the mouth, though. You would think he was battling for every centimetre of the track. The chequered flag will have to wait for another lap. A little bit of a smile there from Harry Tinknell. And on to what should be the last lap and is indeed the last lap. Are they breathing a sigh of relief? I think they might be that he's got through that traffic. Another quick lap. Faster and faster sectors to the chequered flag. It is victory for G-Drive Racing. They win the season opener at Silverstone. They might not have breathed much in the last 10 minutes. But Guerra van der Gaard put in his fastest lap of the race as he took the chequered flag. Victory for him and Harry Tinknell and Simon Dolan. G-Drive Racing Jota Sports claim the season opener at Silverstone. It'll be victory at Silverstone as well for JMW Motorsport as they win the GTE class. Robert Smith, Rory Butcher and Andrea Bertolini kept the Aston Martins behind them all the way to the flag. Number 99 car in second place, battle to the line for third and that's Alessandro Piedguidi, the 80 racing Ferrari was in third. 96 Aston was catching him, has there been contact? Well, it looks as though the United Auto Sports team are going to take a 1-2. There's the 96 Aston. There was contact. Alex Brundle, Mike Guash and Christian England win in the number two car. United Auto Sports, Ligier Nissans, 1-2 on their debut. There's Brundle. There's Guash with the team. How happy do they look? Happy to, I'm sure, our race winner, Gedo van der Gaard, who returns to the cockpit and claims victory first time out with G-Drive. Oh, it's fantastic. I mean, the team has been uh, really helping me out. You know, I haven't been racing the last year and I think we did a fantastic job today. It was just awesome. The car was feeling really good. I mean, the last lap I started to push a bit and I just missed the last, uh, the quickest lap. But although I'm, I'm very, very happy and uh, thanks to Simon, thanks to Harry, we won this race. A thrilling race to win, and with three different chassis on the podium, this could be a very entertaining season in prospect in LMP2. And for G-Drive, who lost the title at the final race last year, they start the season ahead, but for some of their rivals, there's catching up to be done. A stunning debut in Le Mans Series Racing for United Autosports. A 1-2 for their team and that will send them away from Silverstone feeling very pleased indeed. What a great job they've done, you know, to get these cars uh, early on, do the testing um, all the way through the winter and then to come here their first time in ACO racing, their first time uh, racing, you know, these cars. They've, they've run prototypes before successfully, but, you know, not in a full series like this and to come away uh, with a, a, a one-two. In, in the first race. It's just unbelievable for the guys. They put so much hard work into this and so much planning has gone to, into it and they've done an absolutely fantastic job today. Like United Autosports, Graf Racing are a serious racing outfit and they will be challenging for wins throughout the season. LMP3 is guaranteed to be a barnstormer this year. JMW's win in GTE lasted as far as the Scrutineering Bay. Their splitter was not legal. That meant 99 Aston Martin took victory. 96 was second at the line but was penalised for hitting 80 Racing who were pushed up to second as 96 went down to third. Well, as the champagne is sprayed here at Silverstone, that marks the end of the first round of the 2016 European Le Mans Series. I think you'll agree it's been a fantastic race. Do join us next time when we'll be at Imola. The four hour of Imola. ELMS. Mishnah GT3 Le Mans Cup. 
join us for the amazing ELMS weekend to see the European Le Mans series, the Michelin GT3 Le Mans Cup, and the Renault Sport Trophy.